hello good morning guys good morning sir so in the last class we discuss about trunking tagging we discussed about the dtp protocol and vtp protocol so trunking is the process of forming a trunk when two switches connected to each other they negotiate a trunk link with each other means they form a trunk link that is trunking so trunking can be done either manually or dynamically so during the manual trunk you form a permanent trunk using the command switch port mode trunk okay switch port mode trunk and during the dynamic trunking format you use the protocol dtc that is dynamic trunking protocol correct then for trunking when trunk links are created and when any frame is traveling through the trunk link the frames are being tagged so for tagging we use two protocols one is the isl and second is the ieee 802.1q or in short you will just call it as a dot one q this protocol is being used when this isl this is cisco proprietary protocol isl is cisco proprietary and it adds 30 bytes of extra information 26 bytes of header and four bytes of trailer while your ieee dot one q the dot one q protocol it adds only four bytes of information then in case of your isl your native vlan frames are also tagged native vlan frames are tagged means even the frames that are not having any tag it is going to tag them with the native vlan information and it is going to put this extra 30 bytes of information but in case of dot one q native vlan frames are not tagged this is clear then we discussed about the vtp protocol the vtp protocol vlan trunking protocol vtp stands for vlan trunking protocol so this vtp protocol is used to synchronize your vlan database across your network let's say in your network you are having certain switches and you want to synchronize the vlan database on all the switches so you will use this protocol vtp in the vtp we are having three modes first is the server mode second is the transparent mode and third is the client mode. by default all your switches all your cisco switches because both of these protocols they are cisco proprietary means works only in cisco devices okay so by default all your switches are in server mode all your switches are in server mode and when a switch is in server mode it can create vlans delete vlans edit vlans okay create edit and delete along with this they can also advertise the vlan whatever vlan database is there they can advertise this vlan database to the other switches when a switch is in client mode it cannot create cannot create edit or delete vlans your client will accept the advertisements from the server and update its own vlan database accordingly it will just accept the advertisements from the server and again if you are having multiple servers your client are, clients are going to accept the information the advertisements from the server with the highest revision number means the server switch which is uh, which has highest revision number means in which configurations has been revised multiple times higher number of times okay from that switch it is going to take the advertisement then we have a transparent mode so in transparent mode they will not participate okay you can say these switches do not participate in vlan ad advertisements okay they will not participate they are not going to accept the server advertisements and update the vlan database they are just going to forward whatever advertisements are coming from the server they are just going to pass them to the clients to the next switches okay now these can also create can create or you can simply say can modify local vlan database means they can create edit and delete vlans in their own database they are not going to exchange or share this information with any other switches is that clear so this was the part we discussed yesterday today we'll be discussing about spanning tree protocol the stp okay before going into the stp let's say you have a switch and this is your switch one 
Now this switch is connected to switch two. These two switches are connected. Let's say I'm having one host this side, PC one with IP 10.0.0.1 and I'm having PC two this side, IP 10.0.0.2. They will communicate with each other. But what will happen if this link goes down? Communication, Communication will stop. <laughs> Means we can call this situation as a single point of failure. Why? Because this is a single point. If it fails, the network fails, the communication fails, right? So what we can do? Hmm? The physical media we, have to we have to change it. So means we will have, we will always have the single point of failure. To overcome this, we can use redundancy backup. What we can do, we can connect one more cable. Correct. We can use one more cable. Let's say this was F0 by 1. This is F0 by 2 connected to F0 by 2. And we also connected F0 by 3 connected to F0 by 3. So is right now, is there a single point of failure? No. Because if this link fails, if the first link F0 by 2 fails, we still have connectivity through the F0 by 3. Correct. But there is a problem. What is the problem? Loop. In your network, loop is going to form. How loop is going to form? Understand. If by mistake or due to any reason, let's say, for example, not by mistake, not due to any reason, this PC initially wants to communicate with PC2. They does not know about each other. So what your PC1 is going to do? Generate an ARP. Okay. Generate an ARP. ARP is a broadcast packet. And how a switch deals with the broadcast packet? Broadcast to each and every port other than the port it was received on. Means it will be sent this side as well as this side. Right now, we'll consider one scenario when this was forwarded through the F0 by 2 only. Okay. So this forwarded again here. Switch 2 received the broadcast packet. How your switch 2 is going to deal with it? Again, broadcast this side then this side correct then again uh, your switch one received on which port f0 by 3 how your switch is going to deal with it again broadcast right means this side as well as this side and you see this will keep on looping this is one scenario when we have considered just f0 by 2 situation because your broadcast message it will be forwarded through the f0 by 3 also the ARP message sent by this, it will send on F0 by 2 as well as F0 by 3. So when F0 by 3 message is coming this side, how your switch is going to deal with it? Okay. Broadcast this side as well as this side. And again, it received on F0 by 2 and this will be again and broadcast. So means in your network, there will be total two loops working. One will be in this direction and the second loop will be in the opposite direction, clockwise as well as anti-clockwise. And right now I have considered just one system. What if the switches are connected like just two switches I have considered, let's say the switches are connected like this in the stack. So each and every switch has been provided redundancy. Like this, you can imagine the amount of traffic that will be there in your network because this kind of setup is being used in the networks. This kind of setup is being used in the networks when we'll study about architectures, network architectures. Okay. So let's say this is switch one, this is switch two, this is switch three, this is switch four. So you can see how many redundant links are there. And if there is a broadcast, there will be actually a broadcast storm in your network. This will be create a situation that is broadcast storm. Now, how to avoid this? Because you see, we tried to provide a redundancy, but instead of redundancy, we did something else because this is going to bring your network down because again, you see every time the packet doubles, if you see every time one packet is received and two packets are generated. And if there are multiple links, multiple redundant links, then the amount of traffic will be there. The broadcast traffic in your network that will be used and your switches will just be busy opening those broadcast packets, checking the destination MAC address and forwarding them. And ultimately the CPU, CPU will be overused and your network or switches will come down. Is that clear? To avoid this problem, 
we have a protocol okay to avoid this situation we have a protocol that is your spanning tree protocol that is your spanning tree protocol how your spanning trees what your spanning tree is going to do whenever it sees there is a possible loop in the network if you are connecting the links and first of all let's say you connected these two switches with two links so before these ports come up before any data transfer starts your http protocol is going to work and it is going to check is there a possibility of loop and if it finds okay there is a possibility of loop instantly it is going to block one of the link it is instantly going to block one of the link means this link will be now useless through this link you cannot transfer the data okay so ultimately you will have only one link ultimately you will have only one link so if you have only one link then there is no chance of good loop because the data packets they will not be coming back the frames they will not be coming back to the same switch because this will be a situation something like this one so will it form any loop no is it clear how your stp is going to work stp is going to block a port or a link and with the blocked link you will not have any communication so there will be no loop means whatever money you wasted for that cable that is wasted so how it is going to work how the redundancy is going to work if any how the f0 by 2 goes down in that case your second port will come automatically up and you will have the connectivity is that clear yes online people yes sir okay so how many uh, ports can a switch put have 24 ports no, not that uh, the interfaces yeah interface is 24 24 so every port could be considered as interface yeah every port is an interface okay is that clear port and interface same thing no. okay is that clear port and interface is the same thing just the name okay but port sometimes you can consider as a physical opening also and interface can be logical also like your loopback interfaces okay all right so we'll consider a scenario for redundancy purpose i'll use two links let's consider this is f0 by 1 and this one is f0 by 2 the next link will be f0 by 3 and f0 by 4 this is correct yes if this might be confusing you let's keep me separate <laughs> this is your switch one switch two and switch 3 yes either see if it is going to work even if you have one redundant link means single link that is not there it is not going to work because only one link no chance of it but still on the one link also it is going to check whether it is forming the loop okay but when you are having more than one link means two links one is main link and second is the redundant link in that case it is always going to block one link okay and if you have more than two then it is just going to keep one and block the rest of them okay. if the main loop falls then you say it will automatically open the second yes we will see that how your stp works so let's say this is f0 by 1 f0 by 2 f0 by 3 and f0 by 4 this side again f0 by 1 f0 by 2 f0 by 3 f0 by 4 this will be f0 by 3 and this will be f0 by 1 okay this is the scenario okay let's consider mac address of switch 1 is a mac address of switch 2 is B and Mac address of Swiss three is okay. Now, how your STP is going to work? So, first of all, initially, when your STP sees okay, two redundant links means need to block one. Okay, so it is going to let's say block this link. Okay, again, two redundant link 
means let's say it is going to block this one and here also it is going to block three links are blocked okay but now again let's consider if there is a broadcast on switch one switch one is going to broadcast this side as well as this side received by switch two broadcast this side correct received by switch three broadcast this side again this side as well as this side still there is a loop still there is a loop so what your switch is stp is going to do it is going to block let's say again this link now if this link is also blocked this traffic will not pass this side correct means it will not go back and from switch one the connectivity is coming to switch two as well as switch three so your entire network is going to have the connectivity but there will be no loop so how many links blocked four, four links but how does your stp makes a decision how to block the links okay how to block the link okay or you, even you can make it more simple this might confuse you because there are a lot of cables already so just consider three switches with one one link this will be more easy to understand so if your switch one gets a broadcast what will happen forward this side as well as this side then switch two is going to forward this side and switch three is going to forward back similarly if switch three receives it is going to forward this side as well as it is going to forward this side two loops are there so if your stp blocks this link these are not going to travel like this correct so you will have the connectivity no issues correct any doubt in this part okay now how your stp makes your blocking decisions that we'll understand okay so for understanding that i'll use this scenario because right now this is going to confuse you because two two links okay so let me directly go to packet tracer this is all a this one is all b and the third switch is all c now as soon as these switches are connected with each other they are going to send a special type of message that is known as bpdu they are going to send a message that is known as bpdu bpdu stands for bridge protocol data unit they are going to send this message in this particular message they are going to send some information to all the switches means each and every switch is going to send switch two is going to send this side switch one is going to send this side and switch three is going to send this side as well as this side they will exchange these messages okay in these messages they will send the bridge id information they are going to send bridge id information so what is this bridge id information this is going to include priority plus mac address information this is going to include priority plus MAC address information. So how your switches make a for, uh, blocking decision that which ports it needs to be blocked. So first thing it is going to do, <coughs> it is going to select or elect, you can say, a reference point. And that reference point, you call it as a root bridge. It is going to select, like in your OSP, we have DR, BDR concept. Okay, here we have the root bridge. So all the three switches, they are going to communicate with each other and they are going to elect a root bridge. Now, who will be the root bridge? So first thing that is checked is the least priority. First thing that is checked is the least priority. And second thing, if priority is equal, least MAC address. If priority is same, then it is going to check least MAC address. Okay. Now, by default, the priority will be 32768 this is the priority value by default for all the switches means this switch is also having the priority 32768 switch 2 is also having the same priority switch 3 is also having the same priority so means looking at the priority we cannot decide what will be the or who will be the root bridge but then we are going to check least mac address so which switch is having the least mac address switch 1 a so this will become your root bridge. <coughs> now this is the reference point. With this reference point, the next step will come into picture and they will elect root ports. Now what are these root ports? See, this is the root bridge. Switch one is the root bridge. So remaining two switches, they will be called as non-root bridge. 
means they are not the root position. And this is also non root position. Now, these non root bridge switches, they are going to calculate the shortest path towards the root bridge. Okay. So, let me give them the interface names. Let's say F0 by 1, F0 by 2, F0 by 1, F0 by 2, F0 by 1, and F0 by 2. Okay. So, according to switch 2, which port or which link? have the shortest path towards the root bridge. According to switch 2, which port or which path has the shortest path towards the root bridge? According to switch 2, F0 by 1 has the shortest path towards the root bridge, right? Let me remove this. So this particular port, this will be your root port. Okay. For switch 3, F0 by 2. So this will be the root port. Okay. So about root ports, what are the root ports? First of all, these are elected on non-root bridges. Only non-root bridges, non-root bridge switches are going to have these ports. Second thing, these are the shortest post towards the root bridge. These are the shortest cost. Now, what is this cost? So for each and every link, each and every link is having some bandwidth. According to that bandwidth, some default cost has been defined. Okay. Like your 100 Mbps link having the cost 19, your 1 Gbps link having the cost 4. Okay. So if these are 100 Mbps link, this will be the 19. Again, this will be the 19 and this will be the 19. So if your switch 2 tries to come this way, what will be the total cost? 19 plus 19, 38. And if your switch 2 is coming directly, this is 19. So it will see, okay, this is the least cost. So this is my shortest path to the root bridge. And this port will be elected as your root port. This is clear. Similarly, your S switch 3 is going to select. And it is going to see if I go this way, this will be 38. And if I go directly through the F0 by 2, this will be 19. So shortest cost or the least cost towards the root bridge, that will be your root <laughs> port. This is clear. Next election will be designated ports. Next election will be designated ports. So the ports that are directly connected, the ports that are directly connected to the root port, they will be your designated port. So according to this, which ports will be the designated port? F0 by 1 and F0 by 2 means this will be your designated port. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Understood. This is also, uh, this is F0 by 2 and this is F0 by 1. Now, okay. Okay. So this will be designated port as well as this port will be designated port. Now about designated ports. First thing, each and every link will have a designated port. Will have a designated port. Means it can be available on root bridge as well as non root bridge. Okay. Can be available on root bridge and non root bridge. I'll say non RP. This is clear. So it can be present on root bridge as well as non root bridge switches. So these two links, this link is already having a designated port. This link is already having a designated port. This link is not having a designated port. Now, which port to select? Which port to select as a designated port? So they are going to make a decision. Again, there will be some comparison. So whenever you want to calculate the last in the last, you want to calculate the designated ports, they will check first of all cost. Again, if you go through this port, this is the same cost 938. And if you would like this also, this is the same cost 38. So cost doesn't work. Next, we are going to check the bridge ID. So in the bridge ID, first of all, we'll check the priority. So priority again, same type. Then we'll go for the MAC address. 
Now, according to switch two and switch three, which switch is having the least MAC address? Switch two. Switch two means the port of switch two that will be selected as the designated port. But in the real scenario, the MAC address is completely different, right? Yes. So it will different I'll show you the comparison. Okay. This is clear. This port will become the designated port. Now, all the ports other than root port and designated port, they those all ports will be the blocking ports. Means those are the ports that will be blocked. So according to this scenario, this is the port that will be blocked. So this will be the blocking port. Or you can say alternating port. So this is how your STP makes blocking decision. That which port to block. First step, it is going to elect root bridge. Root bridge election is going to happen on the basis of least priority. And if priority is a tie, least MAC address. Okay. Then second step, it is going to select root ports. So root ports is what? The shortest path towards your root bridge. So all your non root bridge switches, they are going to select the shortest path towards your root bridge. And those particular ports will be root ports. Next step is the designated port. So first thing, the designated ports can be available on root bridge as well as non root bridge means each and every link in your topology is going to have a designated port. This is clear. Now, how to identify the designated ports? So first, what you're going to do, the ports that are directly connected to your root ports, they will be your designated ports selected already. So in short, you can say all the ports of your root bridge will be designated ports. All the ports of your root bridge, they will be designated ports. This is clear. Okay. Now designated ports selected. But again, there will be a situation when the port is not on the root bridge. The scenario like between Swiss 2 and Swiss 3. These ports are not available on root bridge, right? These are non root bridge switches. Now we have to select designated port. So how we are going to select? First of all, they are going to check the cost. The cost will be generally equal. So next you are going to go for the bridge ID. In the bridge ID again, first priority will be checked. If priority is same, then MAC address will be checked. And MAC address will all obviously be different. MAC address will obviously be different. So whichever switch is having the least MAC address, that will become the, that port will become the designated ports. And all the ports other than your designated ports and root ports, they will be the blocking ports. Is that clear? This is clear. Yes. What if the faraway router switch has the least uh, Far away means? I mean, so for example, it's... Again, a link will have only two connections, two ends. Okay. So either of them is going to have only two MAC addresses and out the, either of them is going to have the least one and that will be the designated pool. It can be either your Swiss 3 or can be your Swiss 2. Okay. So if there is again a switch connected like this, so there will be new election here. It will not be considered from this one. Okay. Now from let's say this switch is having D, then this will be the designated and this will be the blocking like this. Is that clear? Any doubt? There is clear how your STP is going to work. See, in STP, we are not having any type of configuration. This is by default running in your switches. Okay. This is by default running in your switches. We just need to understand the concept. Now, what kind of configuration you can do in your STP is you can manipulate this root bridge election. You can decide which switch is going to be the root bridge. Okay. You can change the priority. You can change the priority. If you, let's say it's right now, switch one is having the least MAC address. But if you change the priority of this switch and you bring it, uh, let's say less than 32768. If this priority is less than 32768, then what will happen? This will become the root bridge. Okay. This is clear. What is the range of the you know, number that we could provide? Hmm? What is the range of number? Range of numbers? Uh, for that uh, ID. Bridge ID? 3 to 7, 6, 7. This is again by default selected. And it is in the uh, multiple of 4096. Okay. And 65,536. Okay. This is clear. Okay. It is in the multiple of 4096. Okay. So according to that, we can change the, uh, you know, uh, the priority number. Yes, you can change. But again, this configuration part is not in here CCNA. It will be there in your CCNP. Okay. Because these protocols, whatever we are studying here, we are studying the introduction, details, 
will be there in your CCNP enterprise. You will be having certain different, uh, let's say, module CCNP switching, CCNP routing. So there you will be studying all these protocols. Is that clear? But right now you understand how your STP works and how it blocks the ports. Okay. So one more thing you can note down from here is your root port and your designated ports. They will always be forwarding. Forwarding means they will always be in forwarding condition. They can they will be always on. They will not be blocked. These ports will not be blocked. Okay. And your blocking port or alternating port, that one will be the blocked. Is that clear? Then these ports, before going to the forwarding condition, they pass through certain, uh, you can say, states. Before going to the forwarding condition, they pass through certain states. What are the states? First is the down. Second is the blocking. Third is the listening. Fourth is the learning. And fifth is the forwarding. These are the five states. Your ports, they pass through these five states before coming into the forwarding state. So down means the port is down. You have given the shutdown command or you have not connected any cable to that port. In that case, the port is down. This is the first state. Whenever you connect the cable, you are not able to transfer data instantly. That port will remain some time in the blocking state. And how long it is going to stay? It is going to stay for 20 seconds. For 20 seconds, it is going to stay in the blocking state. Then after, it will start listening to the BPDUs listening to the advertisements from the other switches and here it is going to stay for 15 seconds then the learning state in the learning state they are going to see who is the root bridge and what are the mac addresses so they will learn the mac address about the other switches and devices in this state it will remain for 15 seconds and finally the forwarding when they will start forwarding the data so total how much time it will take for the port to come up 50 seconds means you connect a cable in the switch and for 50 seconds you are not able to transfer any data you are not able to transfer any data or any type of communication you will not be able to have is that clear okay now we'll see the presentation this is clear right so first of all what is stp so stp is a switching protocol that prevents layer to loops it is going to prevent your layer to loops created by the redundant links stp enables switches to become well informed of each other so they can negotiate a loop free path through the network means those switches are going to communicate with each other and they are going to find a loop free path means it should not create a loop now how stp works so stp chooses one of the switches as a root bridge first of all it will choose as a root bridge which will be used as a reference point because looking at the uh, your root bridge only we decide which are the root ports which are the designated ports all the calculation happens based keeping that root bridge in mind reference then calculate all redundant paths to the root bridge picks one path which is the best to forward the frames and blocks other redundant paths okay due to this redundant path blocking happens switching loops are prevented okay by blocking the ports it is going to prevent loops now it is going to send the special type of message that is your BPDU. So all the switches switch over information to select the root bridge and for configuration of the network. This is done through the messages called bridge protocol data unit. Each switch compare the parameters in the BPDU message that it sent to one neighbor switch with the one that it received from another neighbor switch. Means whichever BPDUs they are receiving, they are going to compare the bridge ID and priority and they are going to decide, okay, who will be the, who has the least MAC address or who is the least priority and that particular switch will become the root bridge. Okay. So there are two types of BPDUs. One is the configuration BPDU. These are the messages we use in the STP and one is the TCN BPDU. This again, CCN people concept. Okay. So this TCN, it is used to, uh, uh, advertise the changes in the topology tcn stands for topology change notification okay so this con and configuration bpdu is used for stp assessment for stp we just require this one what is the bridge id we say they are going to compare the bridge id so bridge id is 8 byte long it include both priority and mac address of the device in the stp domain bridge id is used to select the root bridge how root bridge is elected so see, in HTTP domain, the bridge with the lowest bridge ID is elected as the root bridge. This means 
the switch with the lowest priority will be elected as the root bridge. And if two or more switches have the same priority, the switch with the lowest MAC address will be elected as the root bridge. This is clear. And this is how your STP works. So first of all, the root bridge is elected. So who is the root bridge? <clears throat> the one with the least MAC address or least priority. Then after calculate path cost and root path cost every bridge. This is optional. Means if you are having multiple switches, then again, who will be the root bridge? And when you are selecting the root bridge, again, root bridge also you can do for primary and secondary. If your primary root bridge goes down, your secondary root bridge will start forwarding the receipt, start becoming the root bridge. Because by default, your priority is 32768. Right. So if you are having two switches, let's say this is the scenario, because your entire traffic will be passing through the root bridge. And if you see, this is the scenario in this case. So let's say this is connected to the router and this side your host are connected, right? So if this is your root bridge, let's say this you create as the root bridge. So what is going to happen? All, all your traffic will forward like this. But if let's say your root bridge goes down and this switch has the least MAC address, then your traffic will go like this. Hmm? If your root bridge goes down, there will be a new election, obviously. It's because already. yes, your switches will be continuously sending the BPD messages continuously. Okay. And they will be continuously seeing, okay, root bridge is up or down. And as soon as root bridge is down, new root bridge election will be there. How frequent is the message Either two seconds or three seconds. Then once the root bridge is elected, it is going to assign the root ports on the non-root bridge switches. Once the uh, root ports have been elected, next step is the designated ports the ports in front of your root ports. And after that, assign the non-designated. These non-designated means simply you can say blocking ports. Because we have selected the root port, we have selected the designated ports, the remaining ports will be blocking ports. Then what are these root port designated ports? So the root port is always on the non-root bridges. It is always the port on the link directly connected to the root bridge or the port on the link, which is the shortest path to the root bridge. It is always in the forward state. <clears throat> forward means it will always forward data. It will not be blocked. Then we have the designated port. It can be on both root bridge as well as non root bridge. Also all ports of your root bridge are designated ports. A designated port is the one that has the best post to the root bridge. Again, they are going to calculate. It will be marked as a forwarding port means again, it will also never be blocked. Then what is a forwarding port? A forwarding port can send and receive frames. The port that can send and receive data, that is the forwarding port. And what is the block port? A block port is the port that is used to avoid the switching loops. Okay. It is called non-designated port. It only listens to the BPDU means if a port is blocked through that port, your switch will only listen to the BPDUs. It is not going to send either. Okay. Any port other than root port and designated port is a block port and these are the timers there are three different timers in your stp okay one is the hello timer forward delay timer and maximum age timer what is hello timer the bpdu message every two seconds okay what is forward delay timer this forward delay timer tells how long your switch will stay in the listening state and the learning state and by default the forward delay timer is 15 seconds means in the listening 15 seconds in the learning 15 seconds. Okay. What is this max is timer? So if a switch doesn't receive a BPDU for a long time from the neighboring switch or from the root bridge, they are going to think that, okay, that is down and new election will happen. Okay. So the hello timer, the time interval between the configuration BPDU messages, this is the interval and the default value is two seconds. Then we have the forward delay timer. So this is the time interval that a switch port spends in both the listening and learning state before going to the forwarding state. And what is the default value? 15 seconds. Maxis timer, the maximum length of a time BPDU information can be stored before discarding it. Okay. It can also be defined as the time interval that a switch store BPDU information without receiving an update. And by default, it is 20 seconds. Okay. All these configuration and timers I'll show you. Don't worry.
Yes. So like uh, uh, you know, OCF there is an election happens, right? Yes. Like that only can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if uh uh with uh the thing is that is down and after some time it come back up? Mm -hmm. So will it be again same? election? Okay. Because it is going to send the BPDUs. Okay. So if it so is already if the these other switch is already considered as a, a or see other switch already have their own root switch, but as soon as your new switch is coming up. No. It is going to send the BPD message. Not the new switch. Say, for example, if a uh, switch is already become a uh, switch. Okay. Okay. So it got down. Yeah, because it was having high priority, right? Huh. Or least MAC address, whatever. Least MAC, yeah. But again, if it is coming up, it is going to send the BPD information. Then again, the election. The again, the election will happen. Oh. So okay. That particular will become again. Uh, again, the root switch. Because they. Hello. See, uh, yes, please. Sir, designated maybe a uh, uh, root port. Like, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, designated port, maybe a uh, root port. You can say that. No, no, no. Designated ports and root ports are different. Root ports they will always only be available in your non-root bridges, and designated ports they can be on the root bridge as well as non-root bridge. Okay, is that clear? Then we have the certain STP states. So the first state is disabled. A disabled state does not take part in the STP. Why? Because the port is down. Second is the blocking state. So the blocking state will be seen here, this one. So a port in the blocking state does not forward frames. Okay. It only listens to the BPD message. The function of blocking port is to prevent the use of loop path. Then we have the listening state. What is the listening state? A port in the listening state send and listen BPDUs. They are going to send BPDUs and listen to the BPDUs. To make sure no loop occurs on the switch network, the port also arranged to forward data frames without populating MAC address TV. Means they are forwarding the BPD message and frames, right? But they are not take, making an entry in the MAC address table. They will just check, okay, who is the last priority? Who is the last? Who has the last MAC address? Then the learning state. So in the learning state, they are going to learn, okay, this is the least MAC address. Now we have to elect the root bridge. So a port in the learning state populate the MAC address table. They will make entries in the MAC address table, but does not forward data frames. They are not going to forward data frames. This port, the port still send and receive BPDU messages as in the listening state. So simply you can say in the disabled, no data, no MAC. Again in the blocking and also no BPDUs. In the blocking, BPDUs will be sent but no data, no MAC. In the listening, they will send BPDU again, no data, no MAC. In the learning, they'll start learning the MAC address. So BPDUs will be sent, MAC address will be captured, but no data transmission will happen. And when it is forwarding, in that case, BPDUs will be sent. MAC address table is created and the data is also forwarded. Okay. So in the learning state, BPDs will be sent and the MAC address table will be populated, but data transmission will not happen. Your switch will not forward the frames. Still your switch cannot forward the frames. And in the final state, that is your forwarding state. In the forwarding state, if you see the port in the forwarding state can send and receive data frames, collect MAC address state and send and receive BPD message, everything. This port is now fully functioning switch port within the spanning tree topology. Is that clear? Okay. Now, what is a root port? <coughs> After the root bridge is elected, every other switch means the non root bridge switches in the STP domain must elect its single port to reach the root bridge. How it can reach the root bridge? The port with the least root path post will assign as the root port. It will always be in the forwarding state. Only non root bridge switches have a root port, and root bridge will never have a root port because all the ports of your root bridge they are the designated ports okay and the data always travel in the root port only. root bridge only oh, sorry, root bridge. now what is the path or link or stp path post value okay so there are certain values lesser the bandwidth higher the post higher the bandwidth lesser the post so for 4 mbps link it is 250 so right now we are generally using either 100 mbps or 1 Gbps. So you just need to remember these two. 100 Mbps 19, 1 Gbps 4 to compare the post. 
Okay. Then we have something called as BPDU guard and BPDU filter. And before BPDU guard and BPDU filter, you must need to understand a small concept about port fast. What is port fast? So what happens? Let's say you have the switch. Sorry. This is your switch. And you connect a PC on your switch. Is there any chance of forming a loop? No. But still your STP is going to keep this port for 50 seconds. Means you for 60 seconds, for, for 50 seconds, you still cannot for data. Even we know there is no chance of forming a loop, right? There's no chance of forming a loop and still it is going to keep it down for 50 seconds. Means it is going to send the BPDs also. It is going to keep it in listening, learning states also. Blocking listening and learning states also. So is this a good thing? No. Because every time you connect a system for 50 seconds, you cannot do anything. Okay. So in that case, what we can do, we have a feature and that feature is known as port fast. So what this port fast feature does, it disable STP on this particular port. Okay. Means it will instantly with the name, you can see port fast means instantly bring the port into forwarding state. Whenever the port fast feature is enabled on a particular port, that port will directly transit into the forwarding state. It will not go through the blocking, listening and learning state instantly forwarding state. So as soon as you connect the PC, this will come into the forwarding state. But again, this can create an issue. Let's say you have enabled port fast on this feature. I mean, on this port, you have enabled port fast and there is a system connected. But in your company, there is a smart guy, right? What he's doing? He wants to use his own laptop also. So he connected a switch and he's using his laptop or PC, right? Now, what is going to happen? Let's say if, what if this switch is having the least MAC address? What if this switch is having the least MAC address? This will become the root bridge and uh, your entire topology of STP will change. Your entire traffic will change, right? So what you can do to prevent this thing, you can use a BPDU guard. You can use BPDU guard. So what is BPDU guard? Again, a configuration, a concept only. So you can, on the port fast interface, you can enable the BPDU guard. So what your BPDU guard does, it checks, or you can say it monitors incoming BPDUs. So whenever this switch will send a BPDU and you have enabled the BPDU guard, your STP will instantly block this port. Your STP will instantly block out this port. And this switch will not have any communication. As soon as on the port fast interface, you have enabled the BPDU guard. And on that port, if your switch receive any BPDU, it will block that port. Okay. So means this guy will not have any communication in his legit system. Neither is legit system nor is on laptop or PC. This is what BPDU guard is. But again, there is a security issue because your switch is continuously going to send the BPD. So means this guy can take the information. Who is your root bridge? What is the MAC address of your root bridge? These kind of information he can get. What is the bridge ID value? What is the priority value? Right? This information, this particular person can get. So to prevent this, we have another feature. Instead of BPDU guard, we can use BPDU filter. This BPDU filter is going to filter both incoming as well as outgoing BPDU. It will filter incoming and outgoing. This is the first thing. So in case of BPDU guard, if it receives a BPDU, it is going to block the port. Okay. But what your BPDU filter is going to do, it is going to block the port as well as it is going to remove this port fast feature also. It is going to remove this port fast. So the port will instantly not come up. This is clear about BPDU filter and BPDU guard. BPDU guard will filter only incoming BPDUs and BPDU filter will filter both incoming as well as outgoing. Is that clear? Okay. Then why do you use for the clients, if we are using client systems, then we'll not wait for 50 seconds because every time your switch comes up, it is going to take, first of all, it is going to take the booting time of switch, then 50 seconds for STP, right? On all the port fast interfaces, we'll apply BPDU guard and BPDU filter. Every port fast interface, you'll set up port fast for your, all your clients. 
and then you'll apply your BPD filter or BPD card. So you mean to say that uh, this uh, BPD card and BPD filter will only activate when another switch are connected to them? Yes. If the client is connected, they will not. Then they will not be. Clients will not send BPD because they are not the switches. Mm -hmm. yes. They will not send the BPDs, right? BPDs will only be sent by the switches. Okay. All right. So about BPDU guard, once BPDU guard is enabled, it will keep an eye open for any BPDU entering the access ports. Our main aim is to have a predictable topology and not allow other switches outside our control onto our network. So if a ROG switch is introduced into our topology, it will in most cases transmit a BPDU, right? If the ROG switch has a better values than the existing root bridge, it will cause a topology change in the switching network. Any topology change is a bad news for the user. By configuring the BPDU guard feature on the access port enables the spanning tree protocol to shut down the port in the event that it receives a BPDU packet. This is clear. Then BPDU filter. The BPDU filter on the other hand just filters the BPDU on both the directions, incoming as well as outgoing, which effectively disable the HTTP on the port. Means no HTTP. BPDU filter will prevent inbound and outbound BPD. Both side BPDUs it will prevent. So if it will disable the STP means no root bridge election. So if someone is connecting, there will be no root bridge. But will remove the port fast state on the port if a BPDU is received. Okay, it will remove the port fast feature. So you will have to go and configure it again. Is that clear? So BPD okay. Yes, please. Uh, any topology changes is bad news for the user. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that one. See what happens exactly that. Let's say right now you're not having the clear idea, but if your switching network is like this. Okay. So initially, according to our configuration, let's say we have created this one as the root bridge and this is connected to the router. And this side we are having the system. So if this is the root bridge, all your traffic is going to pass like this. Correct. But in case, let's say I introduce one more switch uh, on this side and that is having the values lesser than all of them. So this will become the root bridge. Now your traffic will pass like this means there will be delay. Okay. So this is the topology change because if this will become the root bridge, all the root port designated port, all those calculation will happen according to this switch. Okay. And if they will happen, the blocking ports will change and this will completely change your topology. Is that clear? So it will automatically it will change. Yes, automatically it will change because STP is automatic. Okay, got it. Okay. okay so when we apply the BPDU filter, the switch still can you know uh, access, but the BPDU messages. Will yes, be incoming and outgoing, no BPDU messages, okay. and port fast feature will be disabled. Disabled. For that. So yes. still a client can connect to connect. that switch. Yeah, that is why it is just filtering the incoming and outgoing. But in case of BPDU guard, it will block that port. So in this case, it will not have the communication. But in this case, it is going to have the communication. Is this clear? Now we are having certain protocols, STP protocols. So you can divide them into two categories. One is the open standard, means working on all the vendors. And second is, you know, Cisco proprietary. So open standard have HTTP, RSTP, and MSTP. And your Cisco has PVST and RPVST. STP stands for spanning tree protocol. RSTP is rapid spanning tree. MSTP is multiple spanning tree. Okay. PVST per VLAN spanning tree. And RPVST means rapid PVST, rapid per VLAN spanning tree. So, what is the difference? See, when we are talking about STP, so STP is the spanning tree protocol. This is the common spanning tree. Okay. So this is the one that is taking the 50 seconds, but every time we'll not go with the 50 seconds, right? So they came up with the RSTP, rapid STP, and here it takes only few seconds to come up. But again, in case of STP and RSTP, there is only one root bridge for all the VLANs. One root bridge for all the VLANs means if you are having multiple VLANs and your network is bigger, and if you have only one root bridge, your entire data will pass through that one switch. And you can imagine that traffic on that switch and this will create a delay again, right? So for that purpose, they came up with the MSTP. So in MSTP means multiple spanning tree. So for a group of VLANs, you will 
create one STP, then for some other group of VLANs, you will create second STP. Means you will have multiple group breaches. But your Cisco, it started working on per VLAN system from the beginning. So your Cisco PVST, it is similar to STP only, taking 50 seconds. But what is the benefit? The benefit is it is already having per VLAN. Means for each and every VLAN, there will be a separate root bridge. Means it will calculate a root bridge for each and every VLAN. And then it was taking 50 seconds. So they came up with also our PVST, rapid PVST. And it again came to the few seconds. Means STP and PVST similar, RSTP and RPVST similar. And MSTP, it is open standard. You can use in Cisco also. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yeah. These protocols are clear. So you can see your STP and RSTP, these are open standard. And PVST plus and RPVST plus, these are Cisco standard. Okay. Then convergence of STP and PVST is slow because 50 seconds and these are fast. And in case of STP and RSTP, you have only one spanning tree, means one root bridge. But in case of PVST and RPVST, one for every VLAN. Is that clear? For each and every VLAN, root bridge calculation will be there. Let's say these are two switches, for example. You have VLAN 10, you have VLAN 20, you have VLAN 10, you have VLAN 20. Now again, by default VLAN is one. So there will be calculation for three VLANs, VLAN 1, 10 and 20. But due to the default configuration, only one switch will be the root bridge for all three VLANs. And when we have <coughs> single root bridge for all the VLANs, that is known as CST, common spanning tree. Okay, why? Because the spanning tree is common. We are having calculation for each and every VLAN, but still the spanning tree is one. Because between the these two switches, either of them will have either least priority or least market. But again, we can change the spanning tree also. You can change the root bridge also. That who will be the root bridge. Maybe this is having the least MAC address, but you can change the priority here. Then this will become the root bridge for VLAN 2 or VLAN 20. Okay. Now we'll see this thing. And you'll see, see right now they are in blocking, listening and learning state. They are going through all those states. So it will take some time to become green, to come to the forwarding state. And you'll see either of them, one port will be in the down state, blocking state. Means one will be orange and remaining all will be green. Correct? Okay. Now looking at this, how to identify who is the root bridge? Just looking at the switches. Let me give the numbers. For example, this is switch one, this is switch two. This is switch three. Switch two. Why? Because we know that if this is the root bridge, switch one and switch three are going to calculate the root ports and root ports are in forwarding state. So this is the shortage path for switch one and this is the shortage path for switch three. So these are the root ports. In front of the root ports, we have designated ports. So means according to our scenario, these should be the root ports. If this is the root bridge, these should be the root ports. And these are the designated ports. And on this link, this one is the designated and this one is the blocking or you can say alternating. This is clear. So according to this root bridge is switch to, but how do we check that who is the root bridge? Okay. So let's go and check. Let's say I, I'll go to the switch one and check. So on the switch one, you'll go CLI, enable, and you just give the command show spanning tree. That's it. So here, first of all, for which VLAN it is calculating? VLAN one. Okay. Now you'll see two things. One is the root ID and second is the bridge ID. In the root ID portion, in the root ID portion, you will find information about root bridge. And this is the self information. Okay. Okay. What is the priority of root bridge? 32769. And now you'll say, I said 32768. So this priority calculated here is your priority plus VLAN ID. What is the VLAN right now? One. So 32768 plus one. 32769. Okay. Then this is the MAC address of your root bridge. This is the cost. How much cost it is there to reach the root bridge 19 
because fast ethernet then the port information on this port your root bridge is connected so if you see right now we are on the switch one and it is saying on fast ethernet zero slash one the root bridge is connected check fast ethernet zero slash one the root bridge is connected right okay then this is your hello timer two seconds max is 20 seconds and this is the forward delay 15 seconds all information is there then again this is the self information this is the priority means priority plus your vlan id this is the mac address again the timers and this is the aging time because again max aging time this is clear now you see two interfaces are there on the switch and f0 by 1 is the root port F0 by 2 is the designated ports on the switch 1. Let's check. So according to this scenario, F0 by 1 is the root port and F0 by 2 is the designated port. Then what is the state of the port? Forwarding. This is the coast and this is point to point link. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Now check on the root bridge. All the ports of the root bridge are designated ports so you'll say show spanning tree root bridge information self information oh in the last part one more thing left the comparison of the mac addresses you want to compare right so if you compare 0001 similar 6469 so just 6 and 9 which is the bigger self is the bigger means this is the lower so this will be the root bridge because root bridge is elected with the least mac address or least priority so priority by default same but mac address is smaller this is clear if you check on the root bridge so first of all two ports are there all ports of your root bridge are designated ports and in the forwarding condition this is the root bridge information this is the self information you can see same mac addresses and here it is going to say you this bridge is the root means this is the switch that is the root bridge okay this is clear check on the switch tree neighbor show spanning tree so again same thing root bridge information self information so if you check one port is the blocking port f0 by 1 and compare the mac addresses 6469 5c ah, first compare 0001 60 already greater so this is clear about the stp fast ethernet it's uh, 19 is in terms of currency or no just post no unit yes <clears throat> this is no unit just a number is that clear there is no unit it's just like in your OSPF also you'll see cost matrix again they are not having the units okay this is clear yes please go to the top okay right now f zero one six three is already blocked but uh as per the uh scenario uh it should only get blocked if the traffic is you know like high or something forming the loop you mean uh -huh. so it will form the loop if there is a traffic let's say any broadcast on switch one it will forward this side this side so if it is not blocked this switch is going to forward this side again this switch is going to forward this side there will be a loop this side okay that doesn't mean we have to give it to hmm? that doesn't mean that we have to uh, give any ping command or something it will yeah if any broadcast traffic okay because your stp is not going to wait for you to create the broadcast and create the loop okay. it will already prevent the loop Okay, then that would be wasted, right? Yeah, that would be wasted. Means ultimately your topology work will be working without this link. Okay. Clear? Uh, full wave is like completely. No, if yeah. any of the link goes down, let's say for example, for example, let's say I delete any of the link. If I delete this link, now you'll see it will come up. But Still, again, we have to wait for fifty seconds. Yeah, it is going to take some time okay and again as soon as this comes up every time a link is added or removed you'll see same thing again 
Okay. This is clear. It will not remember, but it will again do the. Yeah, order. the calculation will be again done. This is clear to everyone. Yeah, the, the BPD. Any doubt in the STP? No. Online people? No, sir. Awesome. Next, we have ether channel concept. So, this is used to prevent the redundancy. So, we'll discuss this one tomorrow. Okay. Because today, practical and theory, dot, both will be not possible. So, we'll do it tomorrow. So, any doubts? All right. Then, see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.